Welcome to Chaos of Clarity. It is Tuesday, October, Wednesday, I should say, October 2nd. I want to take you into the Gulf of Mexico, specifically the Bay of Campeche, where we have a high risk for tropical development. Uh, we put out this risk over the weekend. Uh, I feel pretty comfortable at the very least there's going to be a tropical depression that forms in this area, maybe as early as Sunday, but in the next week. Now, this is not Helene. This is not going to be a Category 3 or Category 4 hurricane. It may not even be a hurricane, but I do think there's going to be some huge impacts with this in the form of rain uh, as we head into early next week across Florida. So that's why we're kind of sounding the alarm on, on this area possibly developing here. Uh, let me show you uh, what we're looking at. Let's go to the satellite picture here. So this is the area that we're going to focus in on. I, you know, it, it's across southern Mexico. I'm, I'm really starting to focus in more on the Bay of Campeche. You have a frontal boundary that's stuck down here right? And, uh, and I think what's happening is that's why you're getting the blow up of showers and thunderstorms. And that's also an area where we have very low wind shear. So it's not a surprise that you're getting the blow up of thunderstorms. But I think this is the entity that is going to be coming eastward. Now, a lot of the modeling, and I'm going to show you the American model, and I'm going to show you the Canadian model, uh, especially the American model is kind of keying on on some of this energy that this competes with this and it's a very weak entity i'm not sure that's right but we will talk about that but anyway this is the area i think to watch over the next coming days for the possibility of development here now it's important to know that the gulf of mexico is is, is far different than it was last week now, not from a water temperature standpoint. I mean, these water temperatures, especially in the Bay of Campeche, but e even across all of the Gulf of Mexico, are super warm. We're talking about the water temperatures in the middle 80s. Now, you would expect perhaps to see lowering water temperatures well, well where Helene went through. But here's the thing. The ocean cotton, uh, ocean um uh, energy content. So this is where you deep warm water. So even though Helene went through this area, the water was so deep, uh, so warm through a large depth of the atmosphere uh, through the uh, uh, Gulf of Mexico, water temperatures are still super warm here. So Helene had very little uh, impact on water temperatures. So, so listen, water temperatures are super warm for development. What is different in the Gulf of Mexico this week is the amount of dry air and wind shear. Now, let me put this in on full and uh, let me show you so you can see the in, the entire thing here. I mean, this is a, a much more hostile area for development. I mean, you've got a lot of dry air in here across the uh, eastern, central, and northern Gulf of Mexico. And you also have a lot of wind shear. And you can see the wind shear. In fact, this area of moisture that we're tracking across the Western Caribbean, this is coming into this dry air. And you've got wind shear coming right in out of the north. That's why this area... Why it blew up on the satellite earlier. In fact, let me let me go back to this graphic for a second, and and I can show you the area that that I'm talking about. I mean, you can see a big blow up of showers and thunderstorms here. But I'm telling you, you've got northerly wind shear, and once this comes into that area later today and tonight, it's going to fall apart. So that's why I'm not worried about anything in the uh, Caribbean. I'm worried about this, southern Mexico, and especially the uh, the Bay of Campeche. That's where I think you've got to look for development here. But as I mentioned, again, the Gulf of Mexico, a much more hostile location for development. Although, although, you can see an area here where you have pretty low wind shear at the moment. And that's why you're getting the showers and thunderstorms to form right now. And you're seeing that on the water vapor loop here. And I do believe there's going to be a little pocket here for development. Now, what, what I want to do now is I want to show you some of the modeling, some of the modeling, and especially the wind shear. And, and then we'll, we'll, we'll give you a, a quick forecast here. So let me put this on full so you can see what's going on here. So this is some of the modeling we're going to look at. What I'm going to look at is this is the American model. This is the GFS. We look at the 500 millibar, uh, the, the energy. And this 
is the Canadian model. These are kind of the two different extremes of what's going to happen. Let's talk about it and see what, what we think is right. Now, according to the American model, I'm going to show you this now, what it is trying to say is, is that this is not really the development area. It is energy coming out of the uh, uh, of the Caribbean that does tap into some of this moisture and you get very weak development here in the southern Gulf of Mexico beginning this weekend. Let me show that to you here. Again, this is the American model. Watch what happens. You see all this energy coming out in here? See, this is going to be flowing northward. Let me play this forward. This is Thursday, so this is tomorrow afternoon. We'll continue to show this energy forming. You see, there it goes. Let me take you into Saturday, and then all of a sudden here, there you go, Saturday afternoon, right in here, Saturday morning. You're starting to get all this energy, and here's your tropical development. Now, from here, watch what happens. This is Saturday, Saturday morning. Let's focus in on this area right in here where you see the oranges and the reds. Then it starts getting driven toward Florida, but it weakens as we get in the Sunday night and then in the Monday, it comes in the Florida and it is barely a tropical pressure, if not anything. That is what the American model is suggesting, that it's no, it's not what's going on in the Bay of Campeche here. It's energy coming out in the, into the uh, central part of the uh, uh, Gulf of Mexico. It has less time. There's too much wind shear, which I'll show you in a second. And then it weakens across Florida Sunday in the Monday. Okay. Let me take you to the Canadian. And again, right off the bat, you can see the Canadian is a lot more bullish down here in the Bay of Campeche. You see there's energy in there. That's tomorrow afternoon. So that's the Canadian. Just to contrast, look at the American model. Look at the difference down here. The Canadian is sensing all of this energy down in the Bay of Campeche, not so much the American model. So let's go back again. Watch all of a sudden, you're getting more and more energy here in the Bay of Campeche, right? And then, and then it starts moving east. You see that right in here? Watch. It's here, moving here. Now, you do have other energy in here that may be part of the puzzle, but certainly there, according to the Canadian, there is an entity coming out of the Bay of Campeche, moving eastward, and now it's got from here to here to develop into a tropical depression and or storm. So it's a lot of time. And in fact, if you track this, watch the difference. We go into Monday. Monday, see, all of a sudden, there we go into Tuesday. Now, the other thing the Canadian does, and look at the difference. Energy here, that's the Canadian, the same time frame, and this is late Monday night, the, Europe, the GFS barely has anything. You can see it has it, but it is much weaker, and it's actually sensing, uh, the, the American model is sensing more that this has already come through, right? And why is that? Because it's taking it from the Caribbean, not the Bay of Campeche. See, that's the difference. Watch what the Canadian does. We'll continue to move forward here. Watch this. Tuesday morning, Tuesday afternoon, Tuesday evening, then all of a sudden you have what would probably be at least a tropical storm, if not a hurricane, coming on in south of Tampa toward the Sarasota area. The other thing the Canadian is doing, let me go back, this is important, and we've seen this with other storms, what it's also doing is dropping in energy from the northern branch of the jet stream, and it enhances it. We saw this with Helene as well. Remember, we, we had a, uh, energy dropping into it, and then Helene strengthened into a Category 4 before making landfall. But you can see the, the, the uh, Canadian model is showing you that. See how it drops in and right? Boom. See that? There. You go from this little entity that is separated by the northern branch of the jet stream. Watch that, and then watch it jump, watch this. Jump into it, right in here. Watch, you're gonna see this coming up here as we head into Tuesday morning, right? There, see, there. And that strengthens it, and then you've got someone coming into Florida. So those, in a sense, are the two possibilities. Are any of them right? Before we get into that, I, I do want to, what we all, what do we always look at? We look at the conditions for development. Now, 
The water's warm and there's sufficient moisture. We don't have to worry about that for development. What the limiting factor is going to be is wind shear. Those strong winds in the middle and upper part of the atmosphere. So what I want to do is let's go to the wind shear product and let's see what the wind shear is like. And we'll take a look at it on the American model. That's the one that is less impressive. And again, so the, the, the modeling is showing the system in here Monday, Tuesday. The Canadian brings it in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the wind shear in this area as we head into early next week. We'll look at it two different ways. This, first, this is going to be the American, this is the 200 middle bars on the American model. Let's go to Sunday. So you will see this as we get into Sunday. You'll notice this area right in here, very low wind shear. And this is where this system starts coming out Sunday into Monday. Notice the very low wind shear in here. You notice that? This is on the American model. This is as we get into Sunday. Watch what happens. As we get into two, Monday and Tuesday, uh, again, all of the strongest wind shear is up in here. It's relatively light wind shear in this pocket. From the Bay of Campeche all the way in toward Florida. All right, southwest Florida. That is Monday night. Let's take it into Tuesday and Wednesday. It does start to increase, but again, even on Wednesday, you'll notice there's this little ribbon in here, right in here, where you have some wind shear, but it's relatively light. That's what concerns me, is that you've got light wind shear in this zone. Is it perfect? No. But remember where this wind shear is coming from. It's from the west-southwest, so it's going to be moving parallel, parallel to where this entity, I think, is moving from. Also, you have all of this energy with the jet, and I'm afraid what the Canadian is showing is right, is that this jet energy is going to be enhancing this system, not weakening it like the, the American model shows. Here's another shear product that I want to show you. And, and, and again, it's a little more complete. Let's start on Sunday. So what you're looking at here is here's where you have the strong wind shear. It's way up in here. Once you're down Bay of Campeche towards southwest Florida, I see pretty weak wind shear. That's the blue coloring here. That's on Sunday. Let's continue to follow it. This. this is Monday morning. Look at the area again in this zone in here. It's relatively weak. There is some wind shear in here, but it's, re and it's not that strong, and it's moving parallel to the system. Now, let's go into Tuesday, and you can see you start bringing in the wind shear, according to the American model, by Wednesday. Now, is that right? I'm not sure. But certainly you see a window here. Sunday, Monday, at least in the Monday, where you've got pretty low wind shear, you know you have warm water, and one wonders if you're going to end up getting some energy dropping into this that would cause it to strengthen. So that's a good question. That's a good question. My concern is this. You've got enough warm water and you have enough low wind shear for a ton that it's going to try to develop. I would be shocked if this at least doesn't go into a tropical depression. No doubt about this, though. The wind shear is the limiting factor. If the American model is right and the wind shear is this strong, then this is going to be a very disorganized system. It's going to have a ton of moisture, ton of moisture, producing heavy rain in Florida, and that is going to be a threat in Florida early next week. But as far as damaging winds and a strong storm surge, that wouldn't necessarily occur because the wind shear is too strong and this system never could really wrap in. However, if this wind shear remains weak and you have energy dropping into it, then all bets are off on how this would form. I want to wrap this up here, a couple of graphics. So again, when you look at what's going on here, my concern is this, that, this, that while the American model It's taking the energy from here, moving it in from into the central Gulf of Mexico and giving it less time to develop. My concern is that it, the energy is not coming from the Go, uh, 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 Caribbean. It's coming from the Bay of Campeche. And then all of a sudden, instead of some system coming in Sunday night and Monday, this doesn't come in until Tuesday or Wednesday. So you end up getting at least another 48 hours over very warm water. And where I do think you have less wind shear. And I also don't want to underplay that you could have energy dropping into this, strengthening it or enhancing it like the Canadian has. 
So I mean, I, I want to leave you something here. I want to give you with some scenarios, and I think this is what we're looking for here. Now, wind shear is the limiting factor. And if the modeling is right, especially the American model, and the wind shear is strong, this is your scenario, that this remains disorganized. A, a, a hurricane is very unlikely in this scenario. Probably It would not occur, actually. Now, can you get a tropical depression? Yeah. Or a minimal tropical storm? Sure. But the big impact would probably be Monday into Tuesday. And again, we're highlighting Florida as the impacts. This is not going to have any impacts on the Appalachians where we're still dealing with the catastrophic flooding from Helene. But in this scenario, the main threat's going to be heavy rain. And although we continue to target Florida, we don't want to take out the panhandle. I suspect the impact zone is going to be I-4 on south from the heavy rain. So that's roughly the northern edges of Orlando toward toward um, Tampa on south. That would be the heavy ra rain zone. The other scenario is, again, you're looking at weaker wind shear, and now you have a problem, especially if this indeed is the entity that starts in the Bay of Campeche, and you're tracking this across this area over very warm waters, light wind shear, for at least 72 hours. That would be a problem. Then I think we're going to have, at, at the very least, we're going to have a tropical depression in this scenario. In this scenario, you're talking about a named storm and the possibility of a hurricane heading toward Florida Tuesday and the Wednesday. And if that's the case, you have all of the impacts, including damaging winds, flooding, and storm surge. No matter the scenario, though, the one thing that is common in this area is this, flooding and the threat for flash flooding from heavy rain in both of these scenarios, that is the commonality. And I just want to leave you with this. You know, I, I want to show you the model rainfall here. This is the GFS. And I mean, you look at this. This is the GFS, which is, again, the weaker of the scenarios. And look at the heavy rain area. Orlando, Tampa on south. I mean, this would be double-digit rainfall in here. That's the concern. And I think that as we move forward... That's what I want to start to stress here, is that regardless of the scenario, Florida's going to get a ton of rain out of this with the possibility of flash flooding as we head in the Monday, Tuesday, and in the Wednesday. All right? I'm going to leave you with this. Again, it's the scenarios. It all depends on this wind shear. Is it strong? Is it weak? That's number one. And are we talking about energy coming out of the uh, uh, out of the Caribbean? In which case, you you don't have enough time for this to develop, or it's not here or the Caribbean that you're looking for this this area to come out of. It's in here, the Bay of Campeche, and then you've got a longer time for this to develop. Hope that makes sense to you. I'm, I think you've really got to keep an eye on this. This is very murky. It's not as easy as Helene, where you knew what you have, you knew what the ingredients, they were all there for you. This is a little more tricky. So that's why we have the scenarios for now. But again, the commonality between these scenarios is what? This. The flooding and the threat for heavy rain in Florida early next week. I hope it makes sense. And uh, if you do want to have, if you have any questions for me, you can follow me on X, formerly known at Twitter as Twitter. I'm at Accurano.